Thank you for choosing Brigham and Women's Neurosurgery for having your brain surgery. This will go over all of your post-op education to follow after recovery from brain surgery. We're home and recovering after brain surgery. Please make sure to use two pillows behind your head at all times while taking a nap or resting for the night. This will help elevate your head after surgery and help decrease the swelling. When getting up out of bed, Remember to move slowly. Sit up, give yourself a few seconds. Stand up, give yourself a few seconds, and then get up and go for a walk. It is very common to be dizzy after brain surgery when you sit up too fast. Getting up and moving around after having surgery is an important way to make sure your body is recovering. Get up and go for five to six short walks a day, five to 10 minutes long, non-strenuous, just to make sure your body is up and moving around. Please refrain from bending over at the hips to lift anything up. If you drop your phone and you need to get it and there's no one else around, try to squat down to pick up your phone instead of bending over to lift up your phone off the ground. This will avoid you becoming dizzy and potentially falling over after having surgery. We do not want you lifting anything heavier than 10 pounds, which is a gallon of milk, for about the first two weeks after surgery or until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon's clinic. It is very common after surgery to become constipated. Please make sure that you are not bearing down to go to the bathroom. Feel free to grab some stool softeners like Colace or laxatives like Senecot or Miralax from any of your local pharmacy to make sure that you are not bearing down to go to the bathroom. Please refrain from doing any strenuous exercise like running, jumping, jogging, or even driving after having brain surgery until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon's clinic. On this second page, you will see some examples of your weight restrictions after having brain surgery. For those first two weeks, we're gonna to stick to 10 pounds as your weight restriction. That would be a small dog, a bag of baking flour, or a gallon of milk. After you see your surgeon in clinic, about two weeks after your surgery, they will discuss with you increasing your weight restriction to around 25 pounds. And then we'll go up from there. One of the most popular questions we get asked from patients after having brain surgery is, what if something happens, what is considered an emergency, and who do I call in this case of an emergency? Reasons to worry would be, we want you feeling better, not worse after brain surgery when you leave the hospital. We want to know if there have been any changes in your vision, your speech, your walking or swallowing. If you're experiencing any new weakness or numbness that you never had before surgery and don't have the day you were leaving the hospital, we want your surgeon to be aware. It is normal to have headaches for about two weeks after brain surgery. They should be able to be managed with even just Tylenol or some additional pain medication. But if you feel like your headaches are starting to get worse and not relieved by any pain medication, we want your surgeon to be aware. If you are feeling nauseous, so nauseous that you can't eat anything or start vomiting, or are you experiencing any neck stiffness, which feels like your neck is frozen in one spot, please call your surgeon's clinic and let them know. If you notice any changes in your wakefulness, meaning you slept, all, you slept well last night, you wake up in the morning, you're having breakfast, and you're still really sleepy and falling asleep in the middle of a conversation with someone, that could be a change in your wakefulness. Please call and let your surgeon's clinic know. Your wound should remain clean and dry. There should be no drainage coming from that wound on your head. If you notice any drainage at all, whether it be red, yellow, clear, pink, or if you notice your incision is starting to get red and feeling hot, please call and let your surgeon know. This could be a sign of an infection. 
If you have a fever of over 100.5 or more at home, we want your surgeon to be aware. This does not mean that you need to take your temperature every single day. It is just means that if you are not feeling well, so you take your temperature and you have a fever, we want them to be made aware. The first number you are always going to call will be your surgeon's direct line to their clinic. But what if it's 10 p.m. at night, or it's a weekend, or what if it's a holiday? We have an emergency phone number for you to be able to reach any of the neurosurgeons that are here within the hospital 24 hours a day. The phone number is noted right here for you. It is 617-732-6660. Again, it should only be used for emergency purposes. If there are non-emergent questions that you need to get through to your surgeon to ask, please resort to your clinic's number and call the clinic and leave them a voicemail to call you back. If there is a dire emergency that happens at home, say your family member can't wake you up or you have had a seizure, you're always going to be calling 911. It is okay that the ambulance takes you to your closest emergency room. Please just call your surgeon's clinic and leave them a message to know that you are in an emergency room other than one with at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Taking in a proper nutritional diet is a great way to help your body heal. Eating enough protein like meat, fish, eggs, yogurt, cheese, cottage cheese, peanut butter, beans, anything that has protein in it will help your body heal. Our body needs protein in order to heal wounds and to give us energy to get us up and moving around. Make sure you're eating enough fruits and vegetables and drinking enough fluid. Staying hydrated will help reduce your headaches. We worked with a nutritionist who on the next page laid out a fun menu for you to use as a guideline to help you get healthy nutrition throughout an entire day. Decadron is a common medication that we use to help bring down swelling after having brain surgery. Here you'll see a Decadron taper schedule. If you go home on any Decadron, we may be slowly taking you off of that Decadron via a taper. Your responding clinician, like your inpatient PA um, and your surgeon, will be the one that determines what your Decadron taper schedule will look like. We will make it out for you on the day that you leave to make the transition smooth. Please follow the Decadron taper to schedule until you are taking off of it or until you get down to the dose that your surgeon wants you get down to. Other common medications that people go home on after surgery are anti-seizure medications such as Keppra, Lamictal, or Vimpat. These are chosen by your surgeon depending on the location of your tumor that you are having resected. We will go over all of these medications with you on the day that you leave the hospital. Again, steroids like Decadron are really common for people to go home on after brain surgery. Make sure you're taking them with food for every dose that you take Decadron, in addition to taking an antacid such as Pepsid, Nexium, or Omeprazole. All of that will help protect your stomach from any acid reflux you will start getting while taking Decadron. Pain medication that most people need is Tylenol. Tylenol really does an awesome job at managing pain after brain surgery and those headaches that you can feel. Feel free to take regular strength Tylenol, which is two pills of 325 milligrams, totaling to 650 milligrams every four to six hours. Or you can take extra strength Tylenol, which is two 500 milligram tablets every six to eight hours. Both can be purchased over the counter. In most scenarios, we advise you to not take any Motrin, Advil, Aleve, Aspirin until your surgeon clears that it is okay for you to take it. 
Everything is case by case basis. So it may be a situation that your surgeon okays you to take a non-steroidal medication. That is fine. We're gonna go with whatever your surgeon is okay with you personally doing after surgery. Other medications that we may prescribe you but really try to avoid are narcotics. Oxycodone or Dilaudid are the most popular narcotics used after surgery. They do have a decent amount of side effects like nausea, constipation, loss of appetite. They can even give you a headache. We try our best to avoid giving any patients any narcotics because of these side effects. Last but not least, let's talk about how to make sure that you are taking care of your incision at home. Please wear a shower cap that we will provide you with while taking a shower. You can absolutely feel free to wash your body and wash your face. We just do not want your incision getting wet until it is approved by your surgeon. Every surgeon has different rules and every case is different. Some surgeons may allow their patients to wash their head four days after surgery. Some will allow you to wash your head seven days after surgery, and others really would like you to hold off until after your follow-up appointment with them. Until your surgeon specifically tells you you are allowed to wash your head, please continue using that shower cap provided by us or if you have one at home. If you're going outside in the sun, we want to make sure that your incision is shielded from the sun or any of the climate. Feel free to use a loose fitted cap or scarf when you are outside. Otherwise, we want your incision open to air, no dressing on it, no cap on it. Leave it open, breathing air while you are inside. Please avoid applying any creams or gels to that area. That also goes for any antibacterial ointment unless specifically told to do so by your surgeon. It is very normal to have some itching when there is healing going on. Please try your best to avoid scratching your incision and have someone be looking at your incision for you on a daily basis to make sure that it's not starting to get red, there's no swelling, and like we discussed earlier, there is no drainage coming from it at all. If you experience any of these things happening to your incision, we immediately want you calling your surgeon's clinic. Your sutures will be removed at your follow-up appointment with your surgeon. That will be pre-booked for you before you leave the hospital. Thank you once again for picking Brigham and Women's Hospital Neurosurgery for your brain surgery. We wish you a speedy recovery, and if you have any additional questions at all, please never hesitate to reach out to your surgeon's clinic directly.